Welcome back to the channel. Uh, since you're here, we might as well build a battle board, a uh, modular battle board uh, for a customer of mine. Uh, he wanted six pieces, uh, roads, uh, some village square, a couple of hills, and uh, a shoreline with sea. So that's what I'm gonna do. Enjoy. first thing uh, when creating a modular board is to kind of carefully sketch out where you want all the terrain features uh, especially when you're doing roads like I'm doing you measure out the middle of the board pieces so you can align the roads uh, I made a small beach uh, with a little water and then a road leading to um, a curve and a straight road so uh, you can mix and match the pieces and move them around and still they will be um, uh, lining up perfectly and uh, in the middle I made uh, kind of a square a town square where you can place buildings and uh, I don't know barns and stuff to create a small village or a town square and uh, that was uh, uh, the basic uh, features of the board but uh, I also did two small hills uh, uh, that are gonna be separate from the board uh, they're not going to be built in, so uh, I just marked them out where I would like them to be. And uh, that was it with the planning of the board. I then cut out the part where I want the water effect to be on the seaboard piece. Uh, and uh, for the seaboard, I used the uh, 3mm hardboard uh, that I. Uh, will glue together. Uh, I first sanded the beach part a little bit with, with my mouse sander and then I used some PVA glue and I first glued two of the three millimeter boards together and then I glued the beach part. On top of that uh, just using normal PVA glue and uh, when I aligned that, I used the other boards as weight uh, uh, to make it really flat. And uh, I used some paint cans on top of that. Then I started making the roads and the square from an Italian wallpaper that I bought from England, uh, with, which has a perfect stone pattern uh, for 28 millimeter wargaming, it's just a great pattern and uh, just the right size. So I just draw, drew the square and the roads, and I just cut it out and used once again uh, some PVA glue to glue it down uh, on top of the uh, boards where I wanted the road and the square to be. And I was kind of careful to align everything with the previous boards so the road can be used uh, in many different configurations when, uh, when setting up the board. Uh, here you have to be kind of careful and uh, just move it around and adjust it until you're happy with, with where it is and really just like with all Wallpaper, just to try to get rid of uh, any air bubbles uh, underneath. And that's pretty simple when it's um, these kind of small pieces. I then took some wall uh, filler and uh, just spackled that all over the boards where the roads uh, aren't, uh, where uh, the grass and the fields are gonna be using uh, normal tools for doing that on walls and I just uh, I created a thin layer all over with this wall filler and uh, just used my fingers 
to um, create kind of a earthy pattern. For the beach I had cast up uh, some rocks, uh, I bought some rock molds and I used plaster to uh, cast some rocks and then I just pushed them into the wall filler and used some PVA glue to get them in places where I thought they would fit and create some kind of a, a rocky uh, kind of outcropping into the sea from the beach. I then took some watered down PVA and applied that between the rocks and where I wanted the beach to be uh, more sandy and rocky and I first I put some small stones between the bigger rocks and uh, then I uh, poured some coarse sand which I got from Ikea in a big bag. Uh, uh, I then applied some uh, wall uh, wall paint texture powder uh, that I got from a craft store to uh, act as sand on the beach and then I put on some glue. I sprayed the roads and the town square with the Games Workshop grey spray, Mechanica standard grey spray uh, as a base coat. I think that's a good base coat for stone. Then it was time to start the painting and I applied uh, some burnt umber and uh, some light brown paint and some kind of a uh, light beige paint uh, to act as a gradient on the beach from the from the earthy parts uh, where I'm gonna have the grass and down to the beach and onto the water. Some gray paint on the rocks and then two different blue tones and a green tone for the water. I used uh, green closest to the beach and some dark blue uh, where the sea gets deeper. Um, then I just uh, took a lot of brushes and some water and I went to town with just uh, trying to get a nice gradient uh, from the burnt umber down to the sandy beach color and that's just uh, practice and just Patience, just go over and over and over, just uh, trying to mix the colors together and uh, get a nice uh, smooth gradient, uh, kind of a blend between the different colors here, uh, since uh, this is the part where that will matter the most. Um, the water part took probably the longest to get uh, to a nice gradient, and uh, uh, I think the green really was the right tone. I think it looks kind of like a nice beach. And then uh, I created a blend between the green and the sand color also, because uh, as the water is shallow, you can start to see the sand uh, through the water. And uh, yeah, just go over and over and over with the brush until you're really satisfied and use lots of brushes because they get wet. Then I uh, took the roads and the uh, town square and I just sprayed some uh, beige uh, spray on the sides to act as a gradient between the stone and the fields. I think that looks kind of good and the grass has died uh, closer to the road and, and uh, the town square. And I dry brushed uh, both the uh, stone and the earth texture with uh, first a lighter brown and then a beige color. Uh, I went over everything with this so I kind of blend them together a little bit. Uh, I think that uh, looks better than, and not so harsh uh, when you look at the board as a whole. Uh, it's nice to have that kind of uniform highlight color. And the roads got a, a very light dry brush of pure white, also the uh, lighter areas around the road, so the square got some white dry brush also. I then uh, got out my weathering powder and uh, created some uh, kind of uh, wheel tracks on the roads. Uh, I imagine that carts and people walking and horses and stuff uh, traveling the road, so they kind of create a dust trail 
and also on the town square I made it uh, so that it goes around the center you can maybe place a well or a statue there uh, later and I think that looks quite good. The rocks got a dry brush of white and the beach also uh, first a light beige and then a white dry brush to uh, pick them out. Then I used some uh, varnish glue uh, to create the first gloss layer on the sea. I covered the gloss part with the, the old cutout from the sea uh, tile and then I sprayed the whole board with some watered down PVA glue and started flocking. Uh, first layer was some uh, green blend uh, fine turf that I sieved all over the boards uh, to create a nice green uh, kind of a base for all the static grass and uh, uh, coarser turf that I was gonna put on later. I then applied some coarser burnt grass turf on uh, the side of the roads and some dead grass, uh, static grass, uh, that I sieved over and then uh, I just went to town with different uh, uh, shades of grass. I this is a light tone and then I had a medium green tone and uh, kind of a yellowy uh, uh, green tone that I used last to create kind of a uh, summery feel to it, or what do you call it? Um, I think you just have to follow your instinct when you do this. Uh, you don't want a, a solid green field. You want it to look alive and kind of varied. Uh, some coarser turf uh, and some uh, leaves on the square. Uh, some autumn leaves and some spring leaves. I just uh, put them on and uh, glued them down with a watered down PVA. The last stage was putting on a uh, heavy body gloss acrylic uh, medium uh, and I brushed that all over the parts where I wanted the water effect to be. Uh, this is a really really good uh, way to create simple water effects and I just stippled that with a big brush uh, to create ripples in the water. You can do waves if you want with a popsicle stick or you can use an airbrush to blow uh, waves with but I find this way to be uh, the easiest and quickest way to get a nice uh, kind of a windy uh, water surface that looks really nice when it dries and uh, then I let everything dry and um, the board was uh, finished. Thanks for watching, uh, I hope you like that build and uh, if you uh, want to request anything or have suggestions as to what I should do in the future, please do so in the comments below and like the video and subscribe to my channel if you like it. Uh, more videos will come soon, I promise. Bye!